going on, everybody? Welcome to Truth Addiction. This is the channel that deals with the disease of addiction and all the ways it manifests itself. I am a recovering addict, and my name is Brian. I suffer from a disease which is incurable, it's progressive, and unfortunately, it is sometimes fatal. It can, however, be arrested at some point, and recovery is then possible. So I'm just trying to figure out today, how's everybody doing? Let me know in the comments or something, bro. Anyway, it's a nice day outside here on the outskirts of Philadelphia. Sunshine, low 81 degrees, low humidity. I just gotta say, for a fat dude like me, bro, I fucking hate the humidity. I cannot wait for the end of October. Give me Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, football season, and dead insects any day. Y'all can keep the summer. Anyway, I'm hoping everybody's doing well out there. And you know what? If you're an addict and you ain't used today, today is a very good day, right? So here we are. We are on the ninth video of this 12 step, 12 video, well, however you wanna call it. Anyway, I'm doing 12 videos that are coinciding with the 12 steps of a recovery program. Mine happens to be Narcotics Anonymous. It's the one I chose. I'm not here to promote Narcotics Anonymous as the only 12 step program you should attend because I believe that if you have a disease of addiction or alcoholism or substance use disorder, whatever you want to call it, I believe that the best way for somebody with that thing to treat their disease is a 12-step anonymous program. Whether that be Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, so on and so forth. I try to put this out there in every video, so I never know if somebody's just going to watch this one and not when I started doing this series. So I say this in all of them. Just remember, all the steps are the same in all of these 12-step programs, except for the first step, which just changes out a word or two. I'll just give you one example. In Narcotics Anonymous, the first step reads, we admitted we were powerless over our addiction and that our lives had become unmanageable. In Alcoholics Anonymous, it reads, we admitted that we were powerless over alcohol and our lives had become unmanageable. Right? And so on and so on. But the rest of the steps are all the same. The spiritual principles contained in the steps in all these programs are the same. So, just wanted to put that out there. So anyway, this is the ninth video of this 12 video series. We are on step nine. And uh, what we do here is I will read the step, pause reading the step, give you my experience with what I just read, and maybe I can help you figure out some shit. Or maybe you have experience and you can leave your experience in the comments and maybe I can learn some shit today. You know what I mean? No matter how old you get, you're never too old to learn. You know what I mean? Anyway, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell if you like what I'm doing here. Let's get to it. Step nine. We made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Let me just kick it off with this. If you remember the previous step, step eight, Step eight reads, we made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all, right? So hopefully you have made your list, you did a little checking on your fourth step, on your sixth step maybe, you figured out who it is you have harmed, you figured out some people that have harmed you, but you also had harmed them, reluctantly put them on the list, Maybe you even put yourself on the list, which you probably should have, because all this shit is about forgiveness and relieving guilt, shame, 
pride, all that shit, ego. That's what these two steps are about. They go, they kind of go in a combination, eight and nine. Eight, we made the list of who we want to make amends to, and now here we are in nine, making direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so, we injure them or others. All right, here we go. This step should not be avoided. If we do, we are reserving a place in our program for relapse. Pride, fear, and procrastination often seem an impossible barrier. They stand in the way of progress and growth. The important thing is to take action and to be ready to accept the reactions of those persons we had harmed. We make amends to the best of our ability. I'm going to pause right there. This is talking about pride, fear, and procrastination, man. These are not only enemies of most human beings, but for an addict with the disease of addiction, these things are a bitch. Our literature in Narcotics Anonymous uh, talks about procrastination. It talks about apathy and procrastination being uh, our worst inherited enemies, right? Because they're the worst. Procrastination will always get a fucking addict. Ah, I'll do it tomorrow. Especially when it comes to doing what you've been doing to stay clean. Or shit, even tr starting to get clean. There is going to be addicts today. Today, by the time this day ends, that are going to tell themselves, I know I got to stop using, I'll do it tomorrow. And dig this, there won't be no tomorrow for them, man. There just won't be no tomorrow for them. Right? We got 200 people a day, a day in this country, dying from just fentanyl, man. A day. So some of them people out there in this world today, they're going to make that, they're going to say that to themselves. You know what? I know I got to stop. I'll do it tomorrow. And guess what? There ain't going to be no tomorrow. And there's going to be a whole lot of devastation. Some of these people, we, these people, I say we because they're, they're all my people. Right? They're going to leave kids behind, destroyed. They're going to leave parents behind, wives, husbands, all devastated. Because they said to themselves, we'll get clean tomorrow. You feel me? But yeah, pride and fear. Fear's a bitch, man. Like, it ain't easy to look at yourself and write down these people that you've done harm to. In all kinds of ways, man. The lying, the cheating, the manipulating, the theft, stealing from people, all that shit. And you face, you know, when you face that head on and you make that list, damn, it's like, damn, I did a lot of fucked up shit to people. And now here you are, okay, you know who these people are. It's time to face them and make amends to them. Say your apologies, however you want to handle it, right? And it's a scary thing. And some of us, there's pride involved in that. Well, I'm too proud to do that. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't deal with that awkwardness. And, and it also talked about, we got to be ready to accept their reactions. Right? Because some of us think, well, we'll get, we get clean. We're doing good. We got a job. We're doing everything to what we're supposed to be doing. I'll just go back to these people and tell them I'm sorry for what I did. And they're, and they're going to be like, oh, I'm so proud of you, man. Great fucking job. But guess what? Be prepared. That's why these steps are in order. This is to get you prepared. You have done one through eight to get you prepared for this step. Because some of those people, you're going to be like, I am so sorry for what I did. Can you forgive me? And they're going to turn to you and be like, hey, man, go fuck yourself. And you got to be willing to take that on the chin. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, let's go. Timing. Timing is an essential part of this step. We should make amends when the opportunity presents itself, except when to do so will cause more harm. Sometimes we cannot actually make the amends. It is neither possible or practical. And I'll just stop right there. For me, one of mine was my mom. 
my mom would, my mom passed away before I even got clean. So when I did this step to make amends of my mom, I obviously couldn't make direct amends because you know I ain't no fucking spirit conjurer, bro. So I had to do something like I wrote what I did was I wrote a letter to her. And then I did this little thing. I had another recovering addict come over to my crib and I read the letter out loud in front of me and him. And then I kind of, I lit the letter on fire, man, and like sent it up into the ether, man. That was my thing. So there's going to be situations where like you just, you just can't make direct amends. You also got situations like maybe you did like a heavy robbery to where, hey, if I go... Tell him, hey, that's me. Hey, man. Hey, yeah. Remember that 50 grand that you got st stolen from you like five years ago? Yeah, that was me, man. My bad. You know what I mean? They'll be like, oh, yeah? And your ass would get locked the fuck up. So, I mean, you got to take precautions when making some of these amends. Some of us did way worse things than others. You know what I'm saying? So, that, that's what it's talking about right there. You got to be prepared. And you got to talk this over with your sponsor. You got to, like, you know what I mean? Go at shit certain ways here because you could harm yourself or another person, right? We find that willingness can serve in the place of action where we are unable to contact the person that we have harmed. However, we should never fail to contact anyone because of embarrassment, fear, or procrastination. It's trying to get you to see the difference there. Because we can skew some shit, right? We can have this gray area like, well, you know, I can't really make them amends to that person. You know, maybe maybe they're too far away. Any fucking stupid ass excuse you come up with. You just got to make sure that you're really being honest with yourself. Like, can you make these direct amends? Is it... I can't do it, or is it that pride's getting in the way? Is it that ego's getting in the way? Or is it just straight up, I can make them amends, I'll just make them tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes, you're like, I'll get around to it the next day. And that's where the procrastination comes in. The thing is, dude, we, we want to do what we can, as fast as we can, to relieve ourselves of some fucking guilt. You know, there's, there's freedom in that. We want to try to acquire all the freedom we can as fast as we can. Now, now, recovery is a lifelong journey, right? But the quicker that we relieve ourselves of guilt, remorse, and shame, we gain some freedom, which allows us to live our life in a different manner than it would if we're holding on to this shit. You know what I mean? I'm not saying like... You get clean, you got a little 10 days clean, you go around and do all these amends. That's why there's a process here. Like, you should be prepared at this point. You've been through eight steps, you've been clean for a while, you, your, your recovery program is solid, hopefully, and now you're ready to do this. That's what it is. So, I believe the faster you could do these things, the better. But I also believe you could do them too fast. You understand? It's an individual thing. You, you have to face your own truth in that manner. You know what I'm saying? All right. We want to be free of our guilt. I just said that, man. We want to be free of our guilt, but we don't wish to do so at the expense of anyone else. We might run the risk of involving a third person or some companion from our using days who does not wish to be exposed. We do not have the right or the need to endanger another person. It is often necessary to take guidance from others in these matters. Like I just said, there's going to be situations, man, where you want to make amends to somebody. And it just might not be a good idea. You see what I'm saying? I mean, for an example, let's say, let's say you're a chick, right? And when you were using... You were fucking in it. You were just in, insane, right? You're fucking making horrible decisions. Maybe you, maybe you were just getting so fucking drunk, you were blacking out, and you slept with like your best friend's husband or something. 
but she never found out. And here you are, four or five years later, now you're clean, you're sober, and you want to make amends. But going over there and making amends to her could, could fuck up their whole relationship. And who knows? She might turn around and stab the fuck out of both of you. You understand what I'm saying? So there's certain things. We gotta, we gotta be careful when we make these amends with some situations. That's for fucking sure, man. We recommend turning our legal problems over to the lawyers and our financial or medical problems to the professionals. Part of learning how to live successfully is learning when we need help. In some old relationships, an unresolved conflict may still exist. We do our part to resolve old conflicts by making our amends. We want to step away from further antagonisms and ongoing resentments. In many instances, we can only go to the person and humbly ask for understanding of past wrongs. Now this is where most of us got some of this shit. This is just flat out relationships we have, we've been in, whether it was with the opposite sex, whether it was with friends, whether it was with family, whether it was with coworkers, Shit, maybe it was even with our employer. These relationships where we acted like straight trash, right? And for most of us, especially if you've been through an active addiction cycle, you done burnt some fucking bridges, man. You know what I'm saying? You burnt some fucking bridges. So we want to try to resolve. We want to try to resolve that shit, man. We really do. We, it's for our spirit. Like, Narcotics Anonymous isn't a religious program, but it is a spiritual program. It's like a spirit for life. And the more, it's like you're just carrying a bunch of fucking weight on you. And the more you go to each individual and make these amends, more weight comes off, man. And you just feel freer. That's it, man. All right? Sometimes this will be a joyous occasion. When old friends or relatives prove willing to let go of their bitterness, contacting someone who is still hurting from the burn of our misdeeds can be dangerous. Indirect amends may be necessary where direct ones would be unsafe or endanger other people. Hence the example I just gave about like the cheating husband, the cheating husband, John. Just the way it is, man. We make our amends to the best of our ability. We try to remember that when we make amends, we are doing it for ourselves. That's the fucking key, man. Just remember that. We're making these amends for ourselves, man. It feels like we're doing it for the other people. But really, it's about us. This is about stepping up, taking responsibility for our disease taking responsibility for our actions and stepping to these people. Because, like, dig this. <clears throat> Whether the person you step to says to you, I accept your apology and I forgive you, or the person you step to goes, hey, you can go fuck yourself. Go take a long walk up short pier, right? Either way, the feeling that it gives to you is freedom. It may not seem like that, but both instances equal freedom, bro. Freedom from self, right? We try to remember that when we make amends, we are doing it for ourselves. I just read that. Good. I'll read it again because it's a good fucking point. Instead of feeling guilty and remorseful, we feel relieved about our past. We accept that it was our actions that caused our negative attitude. Step nine helps us with our guilt and helps others with their anger. Psh, say it again, book. That's a good line right there. Hell yeah. It helps us with our guilt and it helps the others with their anger. See, there can't be no forgiveness if there's anger. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes the only amend we can make is to stay clean. 
Man, you listen, you got some people to be like, yeah, 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 that's great. You're cleaning all good, good, good job. Just keep doing it. And like, that's exactly what you got to do. Keep staying clean. Keep becoming a better person every day, little by fucking little, right? Help somebody each day in any way you can. Doesn't got to be monetarily, doesn't got to be none of it. Like, just be a good fucking human being is making amends to fucking society, bro. Because most of us, we, we've been just straight trash to society. Bunch of leeching, lying motherfuckers. That's reality, man. We owe it to ourselves and to our loved ones. We are no longer making a mess of, in society as a result of our using. Sometimes the only way we can make amends is to contribute to society. Now we are helping ourselves and other addicts to recover. This is a tremendous amend to the whole community. You motherfucking right. Hey, let me tell you something. Addicts who show up and open up a meeting, which you, which is called their home group, right? A home group is one meeting. It's 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 a meeting every week that you attend, and it's called your home group. This is where you go in, you unlock the doors, open the meeting, set up the chairs, make the coffee, right? So you're prepared for that addict who's about to walk in that door for the first time, broken and hopeless and all kinds of fucked up. And when you do things like that. You start showing somebody else the way of how to live life without drugs, how to live life on life's terms without using, right? Shit, I almost broke my shit. How, when you do that, you are definitely helping society. There's no doubt about it. If you can help somebody pull themselves from active addiction, there's no doubt it is absolutely helping your community, man. For real. That's a big fucking deal. In the process of recovery, we are restored to sanity, and part of sanity is effectively relating to others. We less often view people as a threat to our security. Real security will replace the physical ache and mental confusion that we have experienced in the past. We approach those we have harmed with humility and patience. Many of our sincere well-wishers may be reluctant, reluctant to accept our recovery as real. That's real shit right there, bro. Yo, how many of us, right, you know, you're fucking shit up, you're using, right, and your family's on you and shit, and then you go, you know, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm clean now. You got like fucking two weeks clean. I'm sorry, it'll never happen again. And then it happens again like 50 times. Gets to a point where your friends and family and those around you, bro, they like this. Yeah, he's clean now, but guess what? He'll get high again. Don't worry about it. I ain't even... Is that shit even real? Is all that good shit he's talking? Is all that good behavior he's having right now? Yeah, he's not using right now, but is that real? I don't know. You know what's crazy about that? When situations like that happen, we got the nerve to get salty about it. How could they not believe me that I'm done, that I ain't going to use no more, that I'm a good guy today? How they got going to believe me? Fuck them. It's crazy as shit. Hey, man, that's crazy. Get responsible. We must remember the pain that they have known. Remember the pain that you gave them, bro. In time, many miracles will occur. Many of us who were separated from our families succeed in establishing relationships with them. Now listen, in my experience, my kids are older, pretty much older, and I've been clean for over seven years. I laid down so much destruction in my using. I still don't really talk to my kids. I mean, I got one kid that I, like, maybe see on Facebook once in a while. Maybe I hit him up and he says something back to me every fucking three months. But that's the result of my active addiction, man. There's nothing I can do about that. I just try to stay in place and, just, and, and hopefully the right 
moment in time occurs where you know those amends and those relationships can be built back up if it's even possible. I don't know. But on the flip side, I can tell you one of my homies right now lived that crazy addict ass life, fucking shit up the whole fucking time. And now he's clean, been doing the right thing for a little bit now, and got his kids back in his fucking life, man. This shit does work, bro. It's a big ass deal, man. I've seen people turn their whole fucking lives around, dude. I'm telling you, I've seen people walk in these rooms and these meetings, man, broken as fuck. Like, no hope in the world. Like, no hope. Walking in there talking about, I've tried everything. I don't know if this is going to work, but I've tried everything else. This is all I got left. This is it. And then you fast forward like a year, two years later, these motherfuckers own their own business, got their fucking kids. Maybe they got married. Maybe they restored their marriage that they fucked up. I mean, I've seen it all, man. It's like from fucking day to night, man. It's crazy. It's just, it's just completely on the other spectrum from where they came in at. I've seen this program do that with my own fucking eyes over and over, man. Eventually, it becomes easier for them to accept the change in us. Right. Clean time speaks for itself. Exactly. Here's the thing. There's going to come a point where you've been clean for so long and you've been doing these steps, working on yourself internally, that it gets to a point, man, where you ain't got to say no more words. Your aura, you just exude change. You ain't got to talk about how much you're a changed man or a changed woman. Motherfuckers just see it. Crazy, man. Feel the power. Of a motherfucking 12-step anonymous program, bro. Feel. Patience is an important part of our recovery. The unconditional love we experience will rejuvenate our will to live. And each positive move on our part will be matched by an unexpected opportunity. Shh. Do the right thing, then you do the next right thing, and then the next right thing will happen. It's crazy. I don't really like to throw around the miracle word too much because I'm not a religious dude. I'm just not. My people out there who know I am an atheist. It's just the way it is. I respect religions. My sponsor's religious. Some of my friends are religious. Shit, a lot of my friends are probably religious. I don't like to throw away, throw around the word miracle too much. But it is miraculous what I've seen. It is absolutely miraculous in the sense of what the word means. Like going from this is impossible to do to actually living in what you thought it was po impossible to do. It's nuts. That life that I'm thinking I can have is impossible. And then all of a sudden, you're living in that life that you thought was impossible. That's miraculous. And what's even more fucking miraculous is the fact, is the fact that somebody with the disease of addiction isn't using drugs. That's fucking miraculous, man. Crazy. That's what these programs can do for you. Like I said, Narcotics Anonymous is the one I chose. So it's the one I speak of. Miracles occurring here, man. If you're into that miracle shit, you might want to hit a meeting. Might want to hit a 12-step meeting. Anyway, a lot of courage and faith goes into making the amends. And a lot of spiritual growth results. We are achieving freedom from the wreckage of our past. We will want to keep our house in order by practicing a continuous personal inventory in step 10. Hey, man. So right there, that's the end of it, right? That's the end of the reading. And it's, I like how each step leads you right into the next step, right? 
I'll just give you a little preview. Let me just call that last line. We will want to keep our house in order by practicing a continuous personal inventory in step 10. And I'll just give you a preview. Step 10 reads, we continue to take personal inventory and we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Right? I like how it all leads into it. But yo, that's all I got for today, man. I hope you all got something out of that, man. And if you are, if you happen to be in this process where you got your little list made of people you, you have hurt and have harmed, maybe some of them people on that list, they harmed you as well. You harmed them and they harmed you. That's a hard motherfucking, that's a hard, that's like the hardest person to make amends to, somebody that screwed you too. But like it said in here, it ain't about them. This is about you, right? I just want you to know that you can make those amends. No matter how scary that shit seems, no matter how feared up you, you, it seems to do it. And guess what? Some of those amends you make directly to people, it might just get down, downright fucking awkward. But I promise you, when it's all said and done, you'll feel the freedom, baby. Freedom occurs, man. All right, I'm wrapping this video up. Do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit that fucking bell, man, if you could, you know what I mean? I'm trying to carry a message here, man. We got so many fucking people dying, it's crazy. We over 100, man, I just looked, it's like 110,000 people a year dying from overdoses, bro. Dang! 200 a day from fentanyl. That's crazy. They putting fentanyl on every fucking thing. You can't even go buy a Percocet on the street anymore. One fucking Percocet could kill you because they're stamping their own fucking pills with fentanyl in it. Shit's crazy. There's fentanyl on shit it shouldn't even be in. I know motherfuckers who died smoking crack with fentanyl in it. What the fuck is fentanyl in the crack for? This shit is crazy. Just help me carry this message if you could. I'm going to end it with this like I always end it. Just remember this. The disease of addiction, it's broad. And it's outside of the realm of just using drugs. Keep coming back. More will be revealed. I'm out of here.